Congress to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we've got a couple of appointments this evening. The first is by uh, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation Project 41901 and I-93 detour. The floor is yours. Um, hi, I'm Jackie Haza from the Department of Transportation. I'm here to present Project 41901. Project 41901. Um, it's a bridge preservation project. The project is actually taking place in Bethlehem. It's over the bridge that carries US 302 and New Hampshire 116 over I-93. It's the exit 40 interchange. Um, so just a brief overview of the project. I'm just gonna be doing some preservation work on it. We're gonna be pulling up the pavement, doing deck repairs, putting new pavement down, new paint down, and then we're also gonna be doing repairs on the piers underneath. Um, if you can click to the next one. Thanks. So we're gonna be doing the work through phase construction. So for the first phase, we'll be shifting, keeping traffic in the current alignment, but we'll be narrowing the, the travel way. And then the second and third phases, we'll be shifting all the traffic north, doing work on the south, and then shifting traffic south, doing all the work on the north. And then the final phase will just be putting down new paint and pavement. Um, so the reason that we're bringing this project to Littleton to discuss is because during this construction phasing, we will be having to narrow the roads to 10 and, a half foot lo 10 and a half foot wide travel lanes, which will make it a little bit tough for pedestrians and bikes to get through here. We spoke with the town of Bethlehem, and we don't have any approach sidewalks or sidewalks over the bridge, but they did express wanting the option for their pedestrians accessing Littleton and Littleton accessing Bethlehem to have that alternate option going around town roads. So in order to connect Littleton to Bethlehem, um, we would have to use town roads through Littleton as well as Bethlehem. So if you go to the next slide, mm -hmm. I show this detour. So um, if we're starting up in Littleton, the pedestrian and bike detour would go Cottage Street up to Grove and then down around to Highland and then a little bit of Brook before entering into Bethlehem to loop around and back. Um, so this bike and pedestrian detour would be in effect for about 21 weeks. Again, we're not expecting too high of pedestrian and bike usage through this. Um, they would still have the option to go through construction if they wish to, so they wouldn't have to take this lengthy detour, but just presenting it as a safer option for those who wanted to take it. Um, the second aspect is that in order to do peer repairs for this bridge, <coughs> With the tapering requirements, we're going to have to take the off-ramp to exit 40, which is where 93 South has access to US 302 at that exit 40. Um, this work will be going on for about two weeks, so a shorter spit it will be going on during the other 21 weeks, some period throughout that. Um, so during that, we would require a car detour, so we can go to the next one. The detour that we're asking that we could use for that would be off at exit 41, and then coming up Cottage Street for that um, third of a mile span, and then back down US 302 to the bridge. Um, so this detour has two low clearance bridges, so we will be routing all truck and oversized vehicle traffic past our construction here down to exit 38 to come back up 93, so there wouldn't be those oversized vehicles coming through Cottage Street. So that's, that's the gist of the detour options. So we would love any comments or concerns with this. <coughs> questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we'll take questions during the public comment session uh, unless we have questions from the select board at this time. And when do you want to, I want to get feed, feedback from Chief Smith since he's here and stuff. When do you want to do that now? Or? We can do that now. That's what you want. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm just like to know his thoughts on it. And just to clarify, this would be um, construction season of 2019. Okay. Chief? Uh, I think uh, Bill Sargent 
uh, reached out to these guys earlier mm -hmm. and kind of answered the questions I had. Initially, the way we read the report that the vehicle traffic would be routed down through Brook Road yeah. and then the Highland Ave and, and, and Grove Street. I mean, we had some huge concerns with that, but mm -hmm. uh, they clarified the matter and uh, we're, we're all set with, uh, with the detour. We're good with it. And the only other question I have is that two week period of uh, yeah. redirecting of vehicle traffic. Mm -hmm. Is that continuing two weeks or is it going to be sporadic throughout the Continuous two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, and we, if there were dates throughout that construction season that would be um, key weekends maybe that you would want to avoid or key dates you would want to avoid, we would definitely listen to our concerns. Okay, if you don't mind hanging around further down the agenda, we have a public input session and there may be questions that you can answer then. Okay. Okay. <coughs> The next item under appointments is Ron Bolt, who is going to make a presentation on the liquid plants. Ron? Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, my condolences to anybody who's already heard this briefing. Uh, <laughs> and peddled around a little bit. Um, so uh, this subject is not a new one. Uh, this, this is the, the condition of the Lakeway Elementary School. It's been studied many times over the years, and pretty intensely since 2008. Um, this year, uh, well actually 2018, uh, it, it uh, became more urgent in the minds of the school board. There were two, uh, two reports commissioned. One was a, an assessment report on the building, and the second one was a, a needs report for the elementary school. Uh, and both of those pointed to a significant number of deficiencies uh, in the existing building, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 80 deficiencies. Some of those were like safety code deficiencies. Uh, so the urgency to do something about this lingering situation uh, gained some momentum. Uh, and so a committee was formed at the end of July, uh, nine members from the community, uh, and the goal was to present a, a recommended course of action to the school board that would take uh, their mission uh, functions and policies into consideration. Um, so that's what we have been doing for the last several months. Um, we've met quite a few times as a committee. Uh, we also did some independent study uh, and we basically came to the conclusion that, uh, that the, uh, the renovation of uh, Lakeway would not be fiscally responsible so our recommendation was to, to build a new school. We also felt that uh, there were fundamental problems with the current location on Union Street. So our second re recommendation was to find a new location. Um, so with that, I will actually launch into um, the briefing itself. Thank you. Uh, so these are just a few excerpts from various uh, uh, district and school board documentations. Uh, and and uh, one belief is that a uh, positive learning environment uh, requires excellent facilities, um, effective safety practices, and healthy school climate. Uh, that all has to be done in a financially responsible way. Um, and uh, they. Another goal is to uh, offer the best possible physical environment for learning and teaching. So the current situation uh, at, with the Lakeway Elementary School down on Union Street does not meet these mission, vision, and policy <coughs> statements. I mentioned the renovation would be extremely costly and not resolve all of the problems. Um, a new school at a different location would solve those, but we recognize that, um, that this would be a significant challenge for the average taxpayer, yet it is still the most fiscally responsible approach. <coughs> Emphasis. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the current condition of that lakeway, uh, and I'll breeze through these so we can have a little time for discussion. Yeah. Uh, there's not enough room 
uh, to accommodate all of the uses of that building. Uh, the envelope is archaic. Uh, there's a number of deficiencies. Uh, air quality is, is bad. The building services are poor. Uh, the interior is in very bad shape despite the best efforts uh, of the staff and the friends of Lakeway. Um, inadequate uh, fire safety, security systems, very awkward use of, of space, L-shaped rooms, that sort of thing. Um, and the core facilities, the gym, the cafeteria, the playground, are all undersized. So we looked at a number of options for what could be done about this. Um, one was to try to do in one year all of the renovation, renovations and additions um, that were, would be required. That would include <coughs> enlarging all those core spaces um, and fixing all of the uh, medial areas. Um, that would come to about $12 million, not including the cost of relocating the students for a year, which would be several million dollars additional if we could find a place that would house them for a year. Section option, the second option was to do the renovations over a five or six year period, um, putting about a $1.5 million into it each year. Um, there, there's some inefficiencies in doing it that way, uh, plus it would require five or six positive votes in a row uh, to get it all accomplished. Uh, and again, there would be major disruptions to the classroom. Uh, both of those options would not meet the uh, Department of Education guideline, which is basically says, uh, if you're thinking about renovating a building, it's going to cost 60% more, 60% of what a new building would cost, you don't renovate, you build. Um, so we also looked at what if we just rectify the life safety code violations. Um, that would get us out of some liability issues but it's still going to be in excess of a million dollars, uh, and we still have fundamental problems with the size and location of the building. Um, we could do business as usual, which is just kick it down the road for another year or two. Um, the downside of that is um, there's a tremendous amount of waste into that building. It's very poorly um, uh, energy efficient. See, is bad. The, uh, there's no telling when a major catastrophe might happen. In the meantime, um, we're putting about $100,000 into it in repairs every year. Um, and another downside of that is if something does happen in a catastrophic matter, there is no strategic reserve to respond to a crisis like that. Um, so another option was to replace the building. That's going to be our recommendation. That is our recommendation. Uh, and the other option is to do nothing. Doesn't sound like an option, but actually it is. You just ignore it. Um, but as I mentioned, there's a, you know, a, a lot of wasted money uh, year after year. Um, and uh, there are intangible benefits that would, we would be missing out on by not building the school. Uh, there's lots of risks involved in doing that. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's insufficient funds if something very terrible does happen. Um, so it's, our conclusion is that uh, uh, the, the situation requires either replacement or major renovations in order to meet all of those uh, criteria we mentioned before. Um, we recommend replacing the school um, because the existing uh, building is uh, approaching the end of its uh, useful life. It's not a historic um, building of any type that would require consideration for um, uh, avoiding that fiscal responsibility and, and keeping it going for some reason. Uh, the extensively costly to renovate and basically we still end up with an, an old building with a shaky foundation, still located on a busy highway, um, with insufficient parking, um, that we pay to rent, we rent to, to use uh, every year, uh, and if we did an expansion, we would lose the playground. So, uh, again, the comparison, 
Lakewood was built in the 1950s, a very cost-conscious period of time. Uh, it's already been either remodeled or renovated eight times uh, since 1950, adding, widening, higher, lower, and temporary additions to it. Uh, it's a real hodgepodge, group group over quality. Um, uh, so many major issues. Um, student uh, and teacher disruption during renovation would be very extensive, um, and we would not be able to provide an economic, safe, and flexible environment that we would build in. Uh, so we, what we need is a 21st century <coughs> facility. It's not the 1950s anymore. Many things have changed in the school system. And students are mainstream now. Uh, individual in educational programs, uh, student racial uh, class sizes have changed. We've got ADA requirements. There's a demand now for preschool education, not just daycare. Um, we need realistic uh, parking and bus uh, routing. Uh, and there are energy efficiency opportunities um, in, in new construction. Uh, as far as intangible benefits, um, one of the members of our uh, committee did did some research, looked at about 20 or 25 different studies on the impact of a new school. And they basically result, these are the common threads for those studies. Higher scores on standardized tests, uh, better safety for teachers and students, better health and self-esteem for the students and staff, better image for the community and attracting people to the area. Uh, and with, with, if we, to combine this with uh, some other activities going on in the, in the recreation area, um, it could be a really um, community entity uh, which would service all age groups, not just the students. Guess what? This is the same conclusion that was reached in 2008, and again in 2016. Um, we don't feel bad about that. We feel we did our due diligence and we just didn't accept everything that was done from the past. Um, but uh, so the question now is really, you know, if not now, when will we ever deal with the situation that way? A lot's happened since 2008, a lot of town improvements, a lot of school improvements, but nothing has happened to Lakeway to fundamentally change the situation. So we started looking at sites. Um, again, this has been done before. Um, <laughs> somebody pointed out uh, that the first time Greenwood Acres was considered for a school was 1970. Uh, so not a new topic, not a new location, uh, but we needed at least five contiguous areas to meet state standards. Uh, obviously, it had to be biblical. Uh, we needed at least two accesses. Uh, needed. Uh, Proximity to the towns and, and to the high school, which is the emergency center, uh, so it needed to be walkable. Um, and we did, needed to take into consideration what the impact on the neighbors would be in the school. Um, so we wanted to make sure we had enough land to have buffers, um, so that would accommodate that concern. Um, uh, access to uh, municipal utilities. Uh, and of the 20 some sites that have been studied over the years, Greenwood Acres is the best fit. So, uh, <coughs> our recommendation is to acquire uh, about 26 acres of the 116 acres at Greenwood. Um, and this site could house uh, the elementary school. Um, with enough space for uh, after-school activities by uh, all age groups. Um, new playground, brick center, walk-in, cross-country, skiing trails, ball fields, open spaces, the buffers I mentioned before. Um, new housing close to the school would be an attractive option. Uh, and other as yet unforeseen future community needs. Uh, I won't dwell on the recreation facility because you guys know more about that than I do. Um, but it would be great if we could combine those two projects in some way. 
so here's our strategy. Um, we're going to bring forward a Warren article this year, um, and the purpose of the article would be to ask for an appropriation of enough money, and it looks like it's going to be in the ballpark of about $900,000 to do two things. One, purchase the land, uh, and secondly, conclude the civil engineering work that needs to be performed. Um, that uh, question about how we would fund that $900,000 is up for some debate. Um, various people have, have offered their opinions on whether to bond that or that get that one-time appropriation. Uh, as we speak, the school board is me, uh, and they will, I think, make that decision. One of the reasons we want to do this and do it this year um, is there's uh, hope, uh, maybe even reason, to expect that some level of uh, school building aid will return. Uh, there seems to be some momentum for that. Uh, and if that were to happen uh, in 2019, uh, we need to be shovel ready um, in order to apply and to get retroactive funding for anything we had spent up to date. Um, so we need the land and the plan, uh, and that is the purpose of the Warren article. Um, so it's very critical uh, as uh, the first step uh, is to get that the land purchased. Uh, if we uh, if we do get the land, and years later we have been able to to uh, muster the support for a new school, and we could also always uh, sell the land. Um, if we delay, uh, I guess there's also the possibility we could lose that land, and it is our best fit. So we were looking at something short of our best fit um, if we have to go to another property. Um, also concerned about um, the economic forecast as far as interest rates. Um, and so we want to get onto this as soon as possible. Um, and uh, again, inflation, cost of materials, that sort of thing. Uh, in 2008, when the Sears work was, was, was done at, at, at a new a new high school, a new elementary school. The asking price at that time was about 14 million. Right now we're looking at about 20 million. So five or 10 years from now, you can project how far that might go. Uh, so we think it's time that there's some urgency involved in that. Um, so are we going to bring uh, a $20 million bond to the taxpayers in 2019? Um, we're going to ask for this $900,000. Hopefully that will pass. Um, and then we are going to wait to see what happens with the state aid. State aid comes back. Uh, we will launch into action. We will, we will apply for that state aid. <coughs> and uh, we'll go from there. Um, we already have uh, secured uh, the services of, of the architect. And we have... Uh, sort of a pre-bond uh, agreement with a construction management company, um, which is bonded uh, to the stone, which has a lot of experience in building schools. Um, they built uh, the, uh, the uh, modification to, to profile. They built the police station uh, here in town. Um, very reputable company. They have a long history of working with the architectural firm. So there's, there's good, uh, good uh, synergy already <coughs> in there. So you know, if we were to uh, bring a $20 million bond forward um, at 4% interest, it would be about $1.5 million. We have to pay off uh, every year for 20 years. And that would be $2, about $2.20 on the tax rate. Uh, if we get the matching state aid, that basically all those numbers get cut in half. Uh, 
<coughs> and we already have two existing bonds on the school side. Um, one of those expires in 2023, another in 2027. So if we don't get the state aid, um, that will be the next milestone to look at. When those bonds come off, that might be a uh, window opportunity to, to bring forward a, a new bond. So what our plan of action is uh, right now is um, developing an educational program. This briefing is part of that. We have other, other thoughts on how to get the word out to everybody about what the, what the need is, what the recommendation is, and the criticality of the, of the market <coughs> vote. Um, parallel to that, we need to uh, put a task force together to uh, do whatever, whatever we can to lobby for the lifting of the moratorium on the state aid. Um, we also need to start planning about repurposing the building on, on Union Street. Uh, it's not a bad location, just not for school. Uh, and you know, any proceeds uh, that were accrued from, from, uh, from repurposing that building could be uh, pumped back into uh, paying off the bond on the new school. Uh, and we also would like to, when the time is right, to approach, approach uh, corporations and local businesses um, and, and request some contributions toward that. Uh, we consider this an investment in the future workforce of Wilton, and perhaps there will be some support for that. So in conclusion, um, do, we don't like to think of this as a school board problem. We like to think of it as a community opportunity. Um, it's uh, completely consistent with the, uh, with the Littleton Master Plan regarding economic development, transportation, land use. Um, but the community will have to work together to get this done. Um, again, it's um, our children, in my case, grandchildren, maybe great-grandchildren. Um, it's their future, and they're, they're, they are the workforce of the future. So. Um, we have to make the right decisions, and we need to do that now. Um, so that concludes the presentation. Um, so subject to your questions, uh, I'll stop. Ron, thank you. Uh, we appreciate your presentation and you bringing it to us, to the viewers on the TV. And although the board does not have to make a decision on this or requires a vote, um, Rather than wait till public input, and while you're here and fresh and ready to roll, uh, why don't we open? Better, it? better, better, <laughs> better. <laughs> but better for roll. Why don't we open it up for? Um, I'm going to say 10 minutes of discussion. Right. Does anybody have any questions for Ron? Do you have any idea of what the uh, commercial value? Is? The property would be once you get rid of the old school. What, what worth it is? The old school, the industry? Yeah. You won't believe this, <laughs> but we had a number from a couple of years ago $5 million. <laughs> okay. Would I pay $5 million for it? Probably not. I don't have $5 million to start with. But that's, that was a number that was thrown out a few years ago. I have a bunch of questions on that. First of all, if you were to get rid of the other, the old school, uh, thing on it, what you would do with it from that account? Two, you own a bunch of land up behind Dr. Crow Indices. But the town <coughs> actually made an association with the school. If you were to put that on the market, it might generate some money. I think it's probably 75 or 80 acres. It's got two means of egress out of the thing on it, and that part. The town doesn't have any use for it if they're going to go in a different direction on it. I'm sorry, which property? This belongs to the town of Lofen. The Eaton property? Or? Yeah. Oh, Eaton. Okay. No, yeah. yeah. I just I didn't catch Yeah, I mean, it's why wouldn't yeah. you be looking at saying, getting together and saying, let's liquidate some of these things that we're going to do? Uh, I look at the elementary school out of this thing on it, but it's, the reason why the elementary school was built where it was was because of the fact that they had a problem in Littleton, it was what's called Aptop, and it was Littleton, and it was a case of, it was such a fight between the young people that went across town of Brook, 
that they elected to build that building right there to try to get the two town, town, out of the towns together to stop the fighting, infighting that went on out of the town. There were two parcels of property there at one time. Uh, I think it was a guy named Emery Fool, and he had the first one by Connor Brook, and then it was the other one was Charlie, uh, not Charlie Tony, but Salem Tony's house, which owned the land up and down. If that piece of property, in turn, if you looked at it, and you started to look at it and, and analyze, never mind the school, what would you use it for? Well, the town's got a major problem down here with the uh, senior citizens group. And senior citizens can, can get a lot of federal money. If you were to relocate them up there out of it and put that senior citizen center up there, you've got a kitchen. You've got a gymnasium that certainly would be still usable from the point of what it would be. It's a possibility you might move the library up there on it and put it in that kind of an operation. And then maybe you use the library as a town office. Some of these things need to be looked at prior to making some kind of a commitment, both on the basis of the financial part. You need to be, you've got to be pulling the whole thing together, not just jumping into something on it from that part. I got a, another question on, you're, you're paying rent, I know that. Yeah. Is there a long-term lease that you're gonna have to pay on the lease property? For the parking? Yeah. Is it year to year or is it 20 years? Uh, I, I don't know that it's a long-term lease. Well, I mean, somebody needs to answer those questions, I think, because you're paying about $30,000 a year up between renting from the church yeah. over there and renting from yeah. the hoops across the way. And you need to know if you've got a long-term lease that you're going to be still stuck with on it. And people need to know that. Yeah. As far as that part. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer. Yeah, but you need to, this all is part of what you need to know. If you're going to go in and asking everybody what to do, then you need to have some kind of plans as to what the heck you would do with it. You know, like that. I have a hard time believing that you would just be able to liquidate and sell the old building up there on it for anybody, for housing or anything like that. Uh, yeah. you, you, you know, Littleton, believe it or not, we only had five new homes <coughs> built in the town of Littleton last year. One commercial piece of property was built in the town of Littleton. That's all there was. One commercial property was zoned for one million dollars. <coughs> The average of the other ones were approximately $200,000 to $250,000 a piece. You, in turn, redid the town for tax purposes in here. You increased the utilities, which was the power company, the dams, <coughs> stuff like that. You increased those approximately $12 million. When you get done with the tax rate, the utilities ended up paying less money than what they had paid the year before. So what you have is approximately 90 some odd thousand dollars of additional property taxes in an evaluation. It's all going back to being paid for by the people that live in these homes. Um, I mean, I got friends of mine that have had a thousand dollar increases in their property taxes. And if you're looking at what you're trying to do in this thing without having it all down to nitty gritty and figuring it all out, so what you have is a net result, not just jumping into something and buying something. You need to have all those answers. I'm not saying I'm against the school or fine, but I want all those answers done ahead of time. So the fact that they know what you're dealing with, the community should know what they're gonna do with on the property, they should be putting the property up for sale on it as far as the Eaton property on it and maybe making some other considerations of using that piece of property for the town. Whether you move the uh, senior citizen center, those people don't have a place to park down there. You've got, you've, got all the, you've got a major problem with parking no matter what you do in the whole town and I know you guys are working on that part. But consequently, they can't, people that are senior citizens that go down there can't find a place to park because you get all the people from your uh, thing over here on this side parking over there on that side and they don't have any room for the senior citizens. Uh, but you need to take an overall look, not just jumping into one particular part of the center. 
and you've got to really have a good sense of it. And I don't think that you're, you're, you are just barely jumping into the redoing <coughs> the whole master plan. It's not something that's headed over here, but you're doing a whole new one. And that all should be part of it, too. That's a great segue. I'm going to ask, uh, you know, what is the status of uh, capital improvement plan, which we had at one point, um, where these things kind of got meshed together? Um, is, is there a place where the school and the parks and recreation and the town needs and future forecasts are blended together and we have kind of a, a unified approach to it. And part, you know, part of that, of course, is, is leveling out the, the cost and funding of, of, of those various projects. Can we had a draft of the CIP um, we presented to the planning board. Um, I think that we need to update it. There was also a question, I think, uh, in what would actually be included in the CIP. I think in the past, smaller items have been put in, and that's really not the true nature of them. It's more like you're talking about larger investments for the community. So yeah. it'll be an amended uh, version for the planning board in the near future. Yeah. Are there any co other comments on the Lakeway presentation? Uh, a couple real quick is the uh, what we're asking for this year, what the school is asking for this year on the, the 2019 warrant is to be able to purchase the land and not complete the construction, but to get an engineering and a uh, construction plan in place. Uh, this is required because what we're hearing is there's a good chance the school aid is going to come back at 55%. So if we're looking at 20 million, we could easily get more than 10 million of it covered if that school aid comes back. And they're saying it could come back this year, it could come back next year or the year after. But to get that school aid, you have to be shovel ready. You have to own the land and you have to have the engineering and the design already in place, ready to start digging in order to even qualify or apply for state aid. That's where, it may be three, four years down the line before we actually start building the school. But if the state aid comes up next year, we want to be shovel ready, ready to go. So that's kind of what we're looking at this year for the war art. I agree that, with you Bruce, that in the future, we're putting the committee together to decide what to do in that way. But we should involve the town in that. We should involve the town in that, uh, because you got to property up there. Uh, the rec Recreation is looking at, at building some other parts throughout town. We should probably ask the town and the school to get together to come up with a committee to say, what do we do with these lands that we're just sitting on, and what do we do with Lakeway, and what's the recreation department going to do? We, that would not be a bad idea to put that together. But like I said, if we don't get state aid in the next year, the next two years, we're going to sit back and wait until some of those bonds come up. And between now and 2023, there are 10 bonds and loans coming off between the town and the school. will be off the amortization. It will be gone. That's kind of what we're sitting back away for. Thank, thank you. That's the time running. The, um, if the school, I mean, I'm kind of getting like mixed uh, vibes. On one hand, there's 80, over 80 things that need to be done, right? So some of those are immediate. On the other hand, uh, what I'm hearing is, well, if we can't quite get to the building in two to three years, that would be okay too. So I guess my concern is, or my question is, if the school is that bad right now, is there a chance that the state could come in and say, we're shutting it down? Is is that... Well, we're, my pay grade, but... Uh, well, we, we, we kind of hashed that at, at, at the committee meetings. The problem is, is... is Remember when a high school lost its accreditation because it wasn't ADA? Well, if we don't address some of these light code, then there's a chance they could come back to the elementary school and say, you've lost your accreditation. You can't move kids from, from fourth grade to fifth grade to sixth grade. You've lost your accreditation until you, you solve these problems. Uh, right now, we're kind of, we're, we're sitting and waiting to make sure that nothing is going to happen by the state. 
because they are life safety codes. The egress <coughs> coming down the stairs. To get the kids off the second floor and the first, they're being, we're being told the stairs are too narrow. You can't get them all down in time if there's a catastrophe or an emergency. Uh, we got an 11-inch snowstorm coming, by the way, in the next few days. We haven't had a big snowstorm up here in a long time. What if we get two feet? And that roof, we know that roof is, is leaking. We know it's, it's settling. If we get a major snowstorm at some point, what's going to happen? We don't shovel it all off. Like everybody else does. But <laughs> we know that we've got to start now getting ready for that elementary school as soon as possible. They are addressing some of the issues that have to be addressed, like the fire alarm system. It's an old fire alarm system, but they're keeping it running. We know we should have a newer one updated, but we are keeping it running. We're keeping the school open, okay? Uh, and that's the best they can do with the money they've got available at this point, is to keep things running, to keep things moving, but we got 80 issues, and many of them are life safety codes that are wrong with that school. That's why we're, we're thinking now, let's start this process now so that a few years from now, we do have a new school in place. If we have to wait another year and we don't get that first move to buy the land, then we put everything off another year and we just keep putting off and putting uh, off. Yeah, and it's, I understand that there are some fairly large projects on the town side that are on the horizon. Um, so you know, we've got to get these things queued up. <laughs> there, there are large projects on the town side, and actually we've held off on them because right. of this. Right. And, um, again, thank you for the presentation. Rudy's got a the 10 minutes are up. <coughs> Mr. Gelsey, please make it brief. Very brief. Uh, what I want to ask uh, the time is that $2.20 say I'm always concerned about taxation. And, uh, and this is not against the school because, uh, in my opinion, education and safety are the, the two things that all the time should worry about. Education and safety. But I want to ask you one thing. This $2.20, this is going to go on for 20 years? That's the truth the taxation that the citizens in a little time that they're going to absorb because uh, this project? Probably 25. Okay, yeah, okay. 20 just, just, Rudy, just let you know. That was, if we went for a bond this year, $20 million bond this year, $2.20 on the tax rate is what we look at. That's why we're going with this longer term project. Mm -hmm. So we can get part of it done this year and then take a look and see where we've got the ability to get other funds to help us out in the school. So it's, we're not expecting anywhere near $2.20 on the tax rate right when we get done, okay? There's going to be probably some kind of a bond. I don't know what it's going to cost us at this point, but that 220 was only a sample to give you if we did it this year. In your opinion, you think the time it should cut off all the projects that they have already? I, I don't think It's like, a, you know, the parking property behind the bridge, the, the, you know, uh, all the other projects that they have, uh, which the taxpayer eventually, I, they're going to absorb I'm something. Not, I, it's, and I'm not sure if this is our discussion. We're, we shouldn't be discussing this. But no, we can't stop progress. We can't stop it. We've got to look at the whole situation. For example, Park and Recreation is looking to do it quite a bit. But we'd like to tie them into the school because if we've got 15, 17 acres up there, we're not using maybe Park and Recreation can use. We can't stop the progress, but maybe we can have more discussions with the town on it. So. Thank you. Again, Ron, thank you. Okay. We're going to move Thanks, on. <coughs> the next order of business is the town manager's report. Okay, so just a few updates. Um, not asking for any action on any of these items. Uh, the wastewater treatment plant, just to report, the centrifuge has now been repaired. Uh, the system was in process to flush out uh, polymer system and sludge pumps to ensure that there's no stone remaining in it. We were getting some um, from different cleanouts, and also the tank itself was chipping away and uh, getting into the centrifuge, and I think that caused a lot of the issue. Um, so also on December 26, we received a lab report indicating that we exceeded our EPA limit for uh, our monthly copper and lead 
Um, but we've determined that that's from a lot of sludge build up. We're going to be able to correct that. There's no issue with any specific uh, uh, manufacturer or anything. Um, we're continuing to work on this town school MOU. Um, we presented as much information as we could to the school. We're trying to be very open and uh, we're waiting for a counter proposal from the school. Can, can we back up? You, yeah. you, you were talking about the, uh, <clears throat> the EPA permit, daily, monthly copper. Like, what's the, what's the, so what's the upshot of that? Do we, we get the report, they Thank let you. us know. Mm -hmm. So we report, what we do is we do the monthly testing and then we actually submit that to yeah. them. So we notify them of, of our exceedance. Okay. And then Other than we have to find, figure it out and address it, is there any other, is there a, uh, any fine? Is there, what, what's the? Um, they, well, they would determine that. I think that in the past there's been issues where we've had uh, the same exceedance month after month and then they might. over you know years yeah. that happened and uh, what can come down is they can force us to do something like a local limit study i think that uh, initially when the sewer system was designed uh, we didn't require some things like for example manhole um, access to uh, commercial or industrial facilities that mm -hmm. are, are need to be monitored on an ongoing basis we've changed that now so that we okay. do that um, they can require what's called a local limit study, and it's very expensive, and it requires us to do everything from, you know, monitoring the local water supply to uh, individually monitoring. Um, but this number. one issue, this one report, is, isn't right. going to trigger that, or no? This one should be okay. We, we haven't, uh, I haven't heard from them yet to okay. see if uh, we, we have. We believe that this was because of the centrifuge <laughs> down, and we had a lot of sludge build up, and now that that's being processed through. Yeah. Um, you know, typically what happens is uh, uh, we have a holding tank too that where we take uh, the septic uh, haulers uh, product. And typically that's higher in certain uh, mm -hmm. densities of things like copper um, okay. and higher in slot and uh, nice. raw stuff. So. Yep. Um, there, there was a, a slight, I, I don't want to get too much into this one, but there was a, a article um, in the paper about a uh, restaurant closing. I just want to just briefly address that just to say that some of the information in there wasn't accurate. It did talk about a tax increase of 40%. I've looked at the parcel. Um, that's not accurate. The parcel did go up in market value by about um, 20%. Um, their tax bill looks like it went up somewhere between four and five grand. Um, so it looks like the, you know, the closure, blaming it on taxes, is probably not an accurate assumption. So. Mm -hmm. But I'm working to, to address that. Um, but the, 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 it was not a 40% increase. In it was the, not. Yeah, no, okay. no, the tax increase was about, it was, uh, I think I actually have it in here. Yeah, I have the number. Yeah, $4,143 yeah. is when it went up. And that was really based on the improvements done to the building and the fact that the market, the real estate market's doing better. And that mm -hmm. building is in a desirable location right. and has other marketable features. So. Um, and again, we use Department of Revenue administration required rules. I think the <coughs> article also had an indication that, you know, we don't realize what we do to small businesses. I think that we try to be as um, open and friendly to business in a way that benefits the entire mm -hmm. community. So, um, the other thing is we're continuing to work on Opportunity Zone Fund uh, and exploring, you know, different opportunities that might be available for that. We'll, we'll continue to do that and see if there's anything else happen. Um, there. There's a couple of other legal case updates, but uh, that, and uh, we do have an urgent care uh, convenient MD hearing uh, for a variance on January 23rd at 6 p.m. Um, it appears to be a pretty popular topic. Mm. There's some <laughs> some who oppose it, and uh, there's quite a few who are in favor of the project, but um, that'll be on the 23rd at, in, in this room at 6 p.m. So. That's all I have for the manager's report today. Okay, we have no old business. Under new business, we have three different items. The first of which is uh, zoning board appointments. We have uh, one position open. We have two people that have responded to our ad. We will deal with this under board action. The two people are Mr. Gelsey and Mr. Morgan. We also have to authorize the town treasurer to open an escrow account 
Andrew, would you walk us through that? Yeah. So under our contract for the sub-5 sewer project, um, the CW Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund, there's a requirement that we withhold 10% of all invoices up to when we get to 50% complete of the, with a the project. After that, if the engineer determines that there's no need, no concerns, then we stop collecting that, and the monies have to sit there until substantial completion. So ultimately, it'll hold 5% of the total project um, costs for for the uh, J.A. McDonald uh, portion of the contract, a portion of the project. So we need to put that into a And escrow. those monies come directly off what we would have paid the, the invoice that we would have paid them instead it goes to the escrow. That's correct. Okay. Yep. And we, uh, we already have had our first invoice, but we have a check ready to go right <coughs> to the okay. escrow. Okay. The last thing we have to consider is to accept and expend an anonymous donation of legal funds for the Northern Pass case. Uh, anything more to tell us on that other than what it says? Yeah, nothing more. It's $25,000 that will be split into four towns, um, specifically towns that uh, our attorney represents. It's going to be pro rata until it's gone. Um, there's a condition that we're not to ask who's helping with the donation um, and the town we're still in charge of representation but the bills are going to be paid out of that until the money's gone so and the key word there is anonymous that's correct yeah um, so we next on the agenda is the board of assessors we have no business for the board of assessors today and next is public comment is there any public comment on any of the agenda items? <clears throat> Mr. Hadlock. Uh, the most recent one that you just discussed, um, the, the thing there. The Northern Pass. Northern Pass. Uh, I know the people voted in this town before they really knew what they were doing. And then, I don't think it was ever really done properly <coughs> by the electric company as far as that company. But, on the other hand, I think that our water and light department has a major problem in trying to deal with the utilities that come through our town. Because if these people in turn can, if you're going to fight them tooth and nail over here, they're not going to be working with you uh, and they own an awful lot of other properties, even through the town of Little, on the thing on it. And as a result of it, we had at one time had talked about putting in a substation in the town of Little, on the poor, uh, industrial park. When you go to try to deal with these people on a utility basis on it, and you in turn fight them all from the point of what it is, you're not going to have the goodness of their heart to, to suddenly try to turn around and work with you. Accepting the money is one thing, <coughs> but it all depends. I don't think you have everybody in the town other than there was a vote taken here before anything was really coming out as to what it was, what they were doing, what they knew what they were going to do, or anything like that. And I think it's hard to make a decision until you really know what their ultimate goal was in here. Have we got that far? I don't know. <coughs> Are you recommending that we don't accept the donation? I'm not sure. You're not I, sure? I'm not sure. I, I, I just feel the fact that the, uh, there should be some questions before you actually accept something from dealing with it, depending on what we're going to do. I mean, our, our community is it. Are they not coming through Littleton? Are they coming through Littleton? What's it going to affect? And why would we in turn be accepting money to go on, on a, uh, a legal battle that we really didn't need to from the point of what it is? Well, we've, all, we've already registered it as a, as a participant in that we're against them. That's, That's done. That's how it was voted. That's time. done. Right. We were granted intervening status. Intervening granted status. intervention status, yep. that's the right. term. Yep. So ultimately, do you know what they're proposing for the town of them, other than a vote? Yep. They have no the idea. The in turn is all the way from <laughs> Pittsburgh to <coughs> down south on it. We know, and we know the route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know the route. We know the route, yeah. yeah. Does yeah. the route come anywhere in Lutheran? It's, it's within 
what's considered Littleton's view shed, and so that's why the courts had, uh, had granted the intervener status. Um, they determined a, a certain number of parcels that were going to be basically facing where the towers are going to be coming through. So. I'm not sure. As I said, I know the community had voted originally, but I don't think that they really had an opportunity of understanding any part of it when that vote was taken out of it. Nor do I know today what the status is either. Of them. Well, they haven't given up. <laughs> they haven't given up. Sorry about that. Is there any other public input, Justin? Uh, Mr. Dorset, did you say Littleton represents four towns in the area? We're so we're joined together with several other towns. Um, this donation affects four towns specifically, and they're specifically towns that Stephen Whitley represents um, in M Mitchell, M Mitchell Municipal Group, and that's where the donation is specifically for, is those four towns. Which are those four towns? Um, I don't think I have them right here. I, I believe it was, I know Littleton and, and Bethlehem were both on the list, but I'm not sure about the other two. Okay. So I could get you that. We'll see if we can find that out at some yeah. point. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. <coughs> there are any other public input? I've got another one on the question with these people with the state. Is that work that you're doing state work, or is it being put out to bid? It's state work, which will be being put out to bid. So, so you're not dealing you're dealing with the preliminary part of it. You're not dealing with the contractor who's going to obtain the bid and having to go to it. You're going to get him the proposals out. Correct. Where we go. So you haven't put it out the bid yet? No. And when will that occur? Um, except to advertise on January 15th. So that's the, that's the potential project of what it would be. Yes. Yeah. Is there any other public input? Seeing none, we'll close the public input session. we we'll move on to the board action section. The first one we have to take action on is the New Hampshire DOT Project 41901, granting them permission for their detour. Is there a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's three to nothing. The second one is the zoning board appointment. Is there a motion? Do we have to accept a Guy Harriman's um, res resignation first, or? So we don't have a. He's he's not in communication right now. Okay. I make a motion that we appoint uh, George Morgan to the zoning board. I'll second it. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's three to nothing. Next is the authorization for the, authorization for the town treasurer to open an escrow account. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's three to nothing. Last is to accept and expand the anonymous donation of legal funds for the Northern Pass case. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion that we accept. Is there a second? I'll second it. Further discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Um, what if circumstances change at, at the town? I'm, I'm thinking about what, um, what he brought up earlier about uh, I know there was a town vote, but the town can vote next year something different. Mm -hmm. um, are these funds, I mean, is it, is it dictated whether they're used to uh, oppose or what if, what if the town's position changes on the issue? What ha do we have the funds and then what do we do? Do we give them back or do we? So the, the interesting thing is we don't accept the funds at all. Um, the funds um, are donated directly to, but we're, we're expending them. So we're basically, ex you're, you're, you're we're accepting the use of them almost like a, a gift. The funds will sit at uh, Mitchell Group. Okay. And each invoice will be charged <coughs> to the fund. Uh, so it's almost, it's a, a gift each time up to the So if the end. town's position changes in the future, we'll just stop getting those. That's that, right. That we won't have access to those yeah, funds. Yeah, we won't be anymore. built. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Further discussion? All those in favor? 
that's straight enough. That concludes the selectmen's meeting for today, January 7th. Thank you. Thank you.